as you may know, I'm Ajahn Siti Chai Sakatit. Okay, I teach over here for 22 years. And uh, if you like to contact me, uh, you can contact me by using the email. That is going to be uh, the easiest one, or you may call my office. And during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we may not have chance to miss uh, uh, at the end of this year and maybe next year, if situation get better, I think we, we will have a chance to meet on site. And, uh, and the guys who be the manager of the Instatic, and as you may concern, last term, we have big problem on the examination, on the cheating. But anyway, thing uh, getting pretty well. The guys and the girls, <laughs> not only the guys, the girls also uh, get punished on their uh, wrongdoing. Uh, there is textbook uh, for this uh, course. One is in Thai. And another one is uh, in English. I did post uh, the link for the textbook number two to the Google Classroom. Do you guys join our Google Classroom yet? Can you give me the answer? Yes, I did. You did, right? Did you see the link? Yes, yes, I see. I, okay, I see. and I can you download it? Yes, I use okay. WT email. So anybody who go to the Google Classroom, uh, you will uh, get the textbook. And if you cannot ask Natanon <laughs> how to get it, okay? And this is the Thai textbook. If you can read Thai, I recommend you to time to study the Thai version first. But if you are very good in English, you may go to the textbook. It's going to uh, take quite a lot of time. And uh, let me explain to you something. When you read your curriculum, this course is for credit. And then there is the parenthesis here. It said for dash or that is anyone can explain to me what the first number mean okay this is the credit and this is the hour you study the classroom and this is the lab we don't have the lab okay how about the eight lisa you just come in lisa in are you hearing uh, me? Yeah, yeah, yes, Ajahn. What the I meaning think, of number eight? I, I think that one is the hours that we're supposed to study by ourselves. Yes, that's correct. And you guys, uh, some of your friends just mentioned about Ajahn teach too much. Uh, we don't have time to study. You got to understand for the four credits course, you're going to spend four hours in my class and another eight hour in your room <laughs> at your house. But for this one, there is something you got to study before come to the class. There also something you review your material, right? This is for the review. This is for the preparation. What for the preparation? I always send you guys the lecture note in the Facebook and I hope you are download it and take a study on the lecture note prepare for the class. By doing that, I believe you will understand what I'm explaining in our class. Okay, so for the textbooks, any guys, Anyone have a question? 
No one? Okay. If no one, let me move further. Uh, uh, please join our Facebook group, okay, by follow this link. And some of you guys may come to join me. Uh, there is three questions you got to answer me. First, you use your real name, surname. The second, you use your real picture, something like this one. This one is going to be very clear face. And the third, what is your student ID? So, any, guy, any of your guys didn't join my Facebook group yet? Anyone have the question about joining my Facebook group? Please ask me if you have some question. Kelly Tang, TE. Hello. Good morning, Ajahn. Did you join my Facebook group yet? Uh, I had request to join yesterday. Okay, you asked me and did you answer three of my questions? Uh, yes, I asked. I already answered all the three okay, questions. Thank you very much. Do anyone have the problem with entering my Facebook group? Okay, you don't have, right? And let me switching to the Facebook. Uh, that's uh, I supposed to show you. Let me end the show here. And uh, let me go to the Facebook. Okay, where is the Facebook? Uh, nope, it not come yet. Okay, okay, uh, I got it. Uh, let me share it. Okay, did you guys see my Facebook over here? The first one, I will come you guys to my Facebook and uh, the style of this course will be the same as the ending static. Okay, and that means you have experience about this already. And that is the syllabus of this course over here. You're supposed to download it and study it carefully. Uh, there is some important thing that I supposed to mention. Uh, first part, uh, that's talking about what I did show you from the PowerPoint already. And I also invite you guys to join the Facebook by using your real name, surname with the face photo. Okay, as the example, like the one I show you here. And there is five objectives of learning that you are supposed to be understand uh, in order you guys can be able to do the same as the objective set. Okay, and I will mention it later. Uh, this is called the syllabus. And then there is the schedule that we are going to study. There are a total of 12 chapters in only 11 weeks. That means you're going to have a lot of work, okay, to do this. And for the conduct, of course, uh, did you see what I'm, oh, I didn't share it. <laughs> Let me check it again. Uh, I come to here. Okay. Okay. This is the syllabus, okay. And uh, this is for part already presented to you guys in the PowerPoint. And there are five objectives of learning. I ask you guys to, to read it and try to understand it in order to successfully complete this course. And there are the total of uh, 12 chapter in our 11 weeks. So there is a lot of work for you guys to to study in this course. And for the score, you will do, you have the homework for 10%, the same of in static. I encourage you guys to, to do the homework and turn it in to get the 10%. And then the midterm gonna be 40%. And the final examination gonna be 50%, okay? 
and then <laughs> the grid. Usually, the A always set as the AT. This is the international standard. And for the F, uh, it may be adjust, okay, according to uh, what happened in the term and uh, your performance. Sometimes we uh, give the F to the score below 45, some year maybe 46, some year maybe 47, but it never be go beyond 50, okay? That is the rule. We mostly help your guys uh, on the grid. And there is something that I like you guys to do so. Actually, usually we check you guys to attend the class, but due to the online situation, we didn't do so. And uh, please, if you come to join in the class, please join us <laughs> since the start of the class. Why? Because if you join us in the middle of the class, you may missing some important thing and you cannot follow the class. And homework, after finish the chapter, uh, we, you supposed to turn in within one week by using the Google Classroom that I just mentioned. And uh, about the cheating, last trimester, we have big problem on this and some of your friends have punished. And if you have uh, missing the examination with a proper reason, uh, we will give you the permission to have the makeup examination. And also, uh, when you attend the class, <laughs> actually, if it is the on site, you got to follow the code of conduct. And that may occur in the January if situation getting better. And please uh, take care of your calculator. Okay, the same one as you use in the aging static. Okay, and uh, please pay attention to my lecture. Okay, this is the syllabus. You may download it from uh, the, the Facebook. And then uh, let me go a little bit further to the uh, our Facebook group. Uh, this is the textbook, okay? I did mention uh, for the international program, uh, you may check the textbook from the library. And I did provide you guys uh, in the Google Classroom already. Anyway, uh, I saw Pioria. Pioria, say hi to your student, please. Hello, student. <laughs> Pioria is going to be your teaching assistant, okay? You may contact her and uh, you, he, she, she also the one who managed the Google Classroom. I didn't invite you to join the Google Classroom earlier, Olivia. Did you see my invitation? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. There is a textbook there, right? Uh, this is the Google Classroom for the international student. Okay, you may come and join us by using the link. And this is what I'm say about the link to the textbook, okay? You may download it if you prefer, download anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it won't come. Okay, it's a big one, uh, 150 megabyte. So using the Wi-Fi to download it. Anyway, I will go a little bit further, let you guys to download it. And uh, Nathanan already told me you, he, she, he, he can download it already. Okay. Anyone have the question on this? The Olya, Olya, Olya can see my, my, my screen, right? Yes, Ajahn, I can see. Okay. This is the test code. You can enter this Google Classroom by using this test code. Okay, let me go a little further. This is for Thai. 
You don't need to go to this is <laughs> for that. And there is the aging paper that you supposed to use this for your ten percent homework. Okay, and you going to submit your homework within seven days. Anyone have question on this uh, Google Classroom and Edging Paper? Quiet. None, Papa Jan. Okay. <laughs> Let me go a little further. This is the YouTube. <laughs> if you are Thai, I invite you guys to, to have a chance to take a look. Now, one is based on our lecture, okay? And another one is the lecture that I give to the student last year. If you have time, just go and take a look on this. Okay, and then usually I will give you my lecture notes, okay? You may download it and put it into your computer or your iPad uh, for your reference. I will teach my class basis on all these lecture notes. And I also have some extra example. Uh, usually the extra example come from the examination, midterm examination or the final examination from the last, last year or the previous years. Uh, I will show you guys how to work on it. And then we're talking about the code, okay? And you can, all of you understand this one already. And please follow. This is for credit class. You're going to attend four hours a week and study by yourself eight hours a week. Okay, and then this is for Thai class. That's all for my Facebook. So. Uh, do you guys have any question on this? Anyone? We are 24 of us. How many joining me right now? <laughs> okay. If you're still quiet, let me go a little bit further. Uh, this finish and come to our lecture. Let me share the screen. Up, up, okay. Uh, Aliyah, Aliyah, can you see my screen yeah, from your I, computer? Yes, I can see it. Can. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start <laughs> what uh, we uh, talking about okay this is the quote that I just mentioned that is the Thai textbook if you guys prefer to read Thai and that is the English textbook please download it I will delete the link as soon as everybody no not really some of you guys have it already so uh turn it turn it on you still here yes uh you can share the textbook with your friend, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, please share with your friend uh, uh, by your link whatsoever. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, this is the Facebook group. Okay, and uh, answer to the question to enter my Facebook group. Now, we come to what you supposed to understand. This is the objective of this class. The first one, you got to understand the concept of stress, okay? The stress has the symbol of sigma, okay? When you study the engineering static, okay, you may know about the two force member. Two force member, you can find it in the column or you may, you may find it in the hydraulic cylinder, or you may find it in the task member, okay? When you determine the force 
does occur in the two force member. For example, if it is 10 kN, the symbol of the arrow like this is mean this member is in tension. Okay. And if you cut it and you draw the free body diagram of this one, okay, you may have the internal forces occur inside the material is going to be 10 kN. This determine from summation of x sub x equal to zero. And then, and then, basis upon this concept, the free body diagram that we have studied in the engine static, on this side is going to be 10 kN, but in actuality, that isn't the force here. But in actuality, what occur over here is going to be the stress that's occur all of the material point over here, okay? And by doing that, the stress occur here is defined as the 10 kN, okay? And then divided by cross-sectional area of this one, let's say, is going to be 100 millimeter square. So the simple definition of the stress for this one is going to be the internal force that's occur inside of the material and then divided by the area, okay? And the unit of this one usually is going to be Newton per square meter or sometimes it's maybe 10 power 6 Newton per square meter. We use this unit a lot. We call it Mecca Pascal. For this one, we didn't use much. We call it just the Pascal. Okay, and then there is the deformation that's occur, that's occur due to the force. When you put the tension into the member, you will have what? The deformation to improve performance, okay? <laughs> there is something occur here. Uh, let me, uh, okay. I don't think it's going to keep it. Okay. Uh, they asked me to post some application. Anyway, uh, let me do it again. And then due to this, what happened is there is going to have deformation. This kind of deformation, you can see, we call this is the elongation. Elongation, that means it's going to be longer due to the tension. Okay, and by doing this, we have another thing called the strain. The strain have the symbol of this. We call this one epsilon, okay, the symbol. And then the deformation does occur here and occur here. When we combine them together, this part and this part, we call it delta. And if we use the delta, we divide it by the total length of the member, we call this is the, the tension, the stand in tension, and the unit is going to be millimeter by millimeter. Okay, this is going to be the first thing. We talking about the stress, and the stress due to the force causing the deformation, and the deformation measure in the strain. Any question? For this first one, okay, you still quiet. <laughs> Let me go to the second one. Second one, okay, and this is normal stress. This is normal stress. Normal stress, usually in tension, for example. Okay, this is the tensile stress. When you put the force to the rubber band, the rubber band will get elongation, okay? 
elongation. And by doing this, we get the stress at the internal force divided by the area. And we get the strain as the elongation divided by the length. And then if the material, material is, has, has the linear, 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 elastic behavior, we will have the relationship between the stress and strain in the form of sigma equal to epsilon. This is going to call the modulus of elasticity, okay? That represents the relationship between stress and the strain. And then when you put this thing together, for example, if you put the stress, it's going to be P over A and equal to modulus of elasticity delta over L. You may derive the new equation. Let me take elast this one. The new equation, the deformation or this one, the elongation is equal to P L divided by AE. And Following this one, uh, I should say you're going to have this one in chapter one, and this one will be in chapter two, and this one will be in chapter three, and we will use this one in chapter four. Only this picture, we have four chapter, okay, four equations for the four chapter. And then there is another thing about the friction, for example, if you have uh, this ruler, you just come this and you bend it, okay? When you bend it, you can see the top is going to be in compression, it's going to be shortened, the bottom, the bottom gonna get elongation. So for the friction, the deformation will be short ten on the top, elongation on the bottom. And then there is the middle, there is no deformation. And then the equation from this one to find the fractional stress, the fractional stress due to the moment. And then this one will be studied in chapter six. Okay, that's mean what? That's mean after the midterm examination. Ah, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. This one contraction or short term. This one will get elongation. That is the middle, no deformation. We call it neutral. Ah, and this is the axial stress. This one is a kind of axial stress, okay? The stress that occur along its axis, okay? Uh, actually, for this one, uh, stress will have the form of this one, okay? And there is another one. Another one. We have the shear stress. For the shear stress, there is the force. The force due to the shear is going to be the force that's parallel to the section, okay? This force is parallel to, to the section. And previously, that we have, this has the tension member, it's going to be easier. And then, the force is going to be along the axis. And then that force going produce the, the stress that occur on the section, okay? This one called normal stress, okay? The direction in the axis of the member. But this one, this one, the V, we call it shear force, okay? We call this force is going to be the normal force. Why? Because it's perpendicular to the section. 
but this one parallel to the section, it, they are different. And then shear force produce shear stress. Again, we have what? The tau, this one, the symbol called tau equal to V, V is over here. And then divided by the area. Okay, that's V X upon. And then you have the unit the same, it's going to be Newton per square meter or 10 power six Newton per square meter. This call mecha Pascal. This call Pascal. And then the chia, the chia stress also produce another one that's called chia strain. The chia strain is the, the different of the anchor. Usually, when we start considering this, this anchor is normal, is pi over two. And then after the application of the shear force, the anchor here is set up. When you deduct pi over two by the step of pump, you get this one called it shear strain. Okay, shear strain. And this shear strain called gamma. Okay, that is another one. That is going to be the Greek name. Uh, sigma, epsilon, tau, gamma. And then there is another one. If your dad have the pickup and then you go under the pickup, you can see what so called the shaft. Okay, in Thai is how, how <laughs> And then the shaft is subjected to the torsion. The torsion, the torsion has this symbol like this. Torsion is a kind of moment. It has the unit of Newton meter. Okay, the torsion, the torsion. And then the torsion, Come from what? Come from the car engine. The car engine rotate. Okay, it's transfer the torsion, passing the shaft and rotate the wheel of the truck and move the truck. And when the torsion applied to this lumbar shaft, let's call it lumbar shaft, you may see this small element will change the shape to this one. Okay, to this one. And we measure the shake in the ankle over here. That is the gamma. And then <laughs> the formula compute the shear stress for the sharp is going to be the torsion, the torsion in the T. Okay, and then most of the torsion have the circular section. And then the radius, of the sharp call this symbol we call it low okay and then divided by j j usually this one has the circular section if you recall from your end static okay from the end static there is x there is y you have the i sub x moment of inertia about x equal to i sub y, that is due to symmetry, okay? And j is going to be i sub x plus i sub y, that is going to be 2i, okay? So you can compute this one easily. We call this as the polar moment of inertia. Ajahn, that is a lot of things, yes. This is a lot of things. There is a lot of symbol. There is a lot of formula that you're going to use. And then if the behavior of the sharp is in linear elastic as before, the elastic as before, the shear stress will be related to the shear strain by this one. This one called shear modulus of 
elasticity. Okay, so that is another one looking the same as the modulus of elasticity, but this is the chia. And then, if you you like to determine the deformation, this is going to be in the form of angle of twist. Okay, after the application of the torsion over here, the lightest needle on the section of this one will move. Okay, and then there is the angle over here. And we call this as the phi, the angle. That is for the sharp. If you are the mechanical engineering student, you going to use a lot of this thing. And then there is transfer shear in the beam. Okay, and when the beam, this is candle beam, subjected to the shear force. If this beam made by the rubber, it's beautifully formed like this. And then this is going to be in the chapter seven. You can compute the transfer shear stress from the V, the shear force, time the symbol Q. I will explain to you later when we go to this chapter. And this is the moment of inertia. And for the T, T is going to be the width of the section. And I forgot to tell you the sharp. This one going to be on the chapter five. It's only five. Previously, we have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and then <laughs> this is this is chapter one. This is still chapter one. Okay. And this is chapter six. And this is chapter one, two, three, four. See? This is the review, everything you're supposed to know. And uh, if you can catch it, that is the most of the, the, the lecture we will talking about. And then the second one, we talking about the concept of strain that I'm explained to you already. Okay. And then due to the strain, the strain from the deformation, this is the Subspecimen in tension, the subspecimen get elongation. Okay, this chop is in torsion. Okay, it get the twisting, and this one is in fracture. Okay, the same one as you bend this ruler. Uh, so the strain. That's I explain will come from the stress. Okay, the stress come from the internal forces and moment. The internal forces and moment come from the external loop. Uh, let me talk to you about this. We have the external load. Okay, that's produce the internal force and moment. And that's going to produce the stress and also the strain. That's mean what? That's mean on the previous class, you are able to determine the internal force and moment. And if you recall how to determine it, you use the free body diagram and you use the equation of equilibrium, okay? Then come to this part <laughs> of mechanics of material. You are going to, to determine the, the certain and certain, okay? And again, the stress can be called normal stress and strain also have the normal strength. And then, and then you also has the, oops, sorry. Uh, you also has the oop, shear stress and shear stress cause the 
shear strain. And again, uh, the shear stress is the tau. The shear strain is gamma. And then the normal stress is sigma. And normal strain is epsilon. And there is a number of equations I just mentioned about it. Okay, so it's going to depend on the type of loading that's occur on the structural member. Okay, and that is uh, explanation over here. Then there is the relationship, as you know, sigma equal to E epsilon. And also we have tau equal to G gamma. And I said, this is called what? Shear modulus of elasticity and elasticity. And this one called the modulus, this one called the modulus of elast, modulus of elast, elasticity. Okay, this is the name complicated. So when you plot the curve between the, for example, sigma and epsilon, you can plot this by doing the material, material testing. We have this kind of machine called universal testing machine. Okay, uh, UTM, sorry universal testing machine. This costs about 3 million baht, <laughs> very expensive machine. And then by doing this, you will get the club for the steel, for the steel. We have steel, we have aluminum, we have concrete. The club will look like this, okay? And this called the stress strain diagram, okay? It's come from the Material testing in the lab. And then they represent what? They represent the mechanical property. You will determine the modulus of elasticity of the steel by what? By compute the slope over here. Okay. And then by checking this for this one, you will get the yielding stress. Okay. And by measure this one over here, and then you project it up over here, you will get the ultimate stress. That is the highest stress the material can resist. That's quite a lot, right? Anyone? You just sleeping? This is called the stress strain diagram from the lab. Okay, and then you got the shape like this, this for the steel, for the my steel. You got to be able to read the stress strain that can to get the value of the yielding stress, of the ultimate stress. You're supposed to compute for the modulus of elasticity. Why? Why you need to determine this? Because this mechanical property are important when you are when you decide the structural member and you may decide the column or you may decide the beam okay and you may decide the frame this is important and it's only determined in the lab okay and that's you need this knowledge for, for your career in the future. Next, you're supposed to be analyzed and decide. I'm talking about decide already, okay? Decide does mean you're looking for the size of the member. In the analyze, you're looking for the stress that's occur in the member and compare to this value and check it, whether it fail or not. And then, the structure can be classified to the axial load member, axial load member causing this stress state. And 
torsional load member, torsional load member, the shaft causing this equation. And you supposed to do the analysis and decide of these two types of member, both statically determinate and statically indeterminate. What is mean? Ajahn does is a lot. Okay, just go back and try to un understand it. The statically determinate. This one, you can analyze and decide by using the free body diagram and equation of equilibrium. You can solve it. That means you can use the knowledge from the ending static to solve this statically determinate. But for the further study, you got to need more condition in order to solve for statically indeterminate. This is going to require you new knowledge. And this one, you will use your engineering static knowledge. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Then there is a lot of stress, right? As far as you, you may remember the stress may be axial stress. The stress may be due to the moment, for example, and shear stress, okay, may be come from this equation. And also shear stress may come from this equation. They are different, but in some cases, as you see from the picture below, the force that's applied to the structural member will produce different kind of, of internal forces and moment. For example, the P will produce the P over here. And the force here going to be W. And if you do see this picture, you may see this W is also from the intrinsic time to rotate this one. So what is mean that is going to have the torsion over here. Okay, this is going to be the torsion about X axis from W. And if, oops, <laughs> if you see the first P, what going on for the first P? The first P time to rotate this one. So the first P time to produce this bending. Okay, this is going to be M. M about what? M about Y. This is going to be M. M about what? M about X. Okay, and uh, not enough. The W also produce another moment uh, when you consider it. W also time to rotate about this axis. Okay, it's going to produce this one for M sub C. And then you may see this one going to produce the, the shear, okay? And this one going to produce this stress, okay? And <laughs> this one and this one going to produce this one. And then we have another one, tau equal to T rho over J. That is going to occur over here. So there is a lot of stresses occur. And what you do is you got to combine it, occur on this section. And not enough, you also got to know about the stress can transform itself when you consider it in different angles. And then you can to determine the principal normal stress and principal in pain shear stress and associated ankle. That's quite a lot, but uh, we can study slowly <laughs> to understand it. And then you got to be able to analyze and decide the basic circular component. We have what? We have the beam, we, every house, every industrial building have the beam. 
and have the column. Okay, this is going to be the beam, right? This is going to be the beam. Okay, and this is going to be the column, and this is going to be the column. Now, we also need to determine the deformation. Okay, that is going to require a lot of things. And let me pass it quickly. And then the last one, we find the critical stress in the column. And that is the chapter that we are going to study. Five first chapter for the midterm examination. When finished five chapter, we have midterm examination. And then uh, following what I did just give you, if you call this one again, this is going to be the stress, normal, normal stress. This is going to be shear stress. And this is going to be normal strain. This is going to be shear strain. Okay, and then you have sigma equal to E epsilon. You have tau equal to T gamma. That is going to for the chapter three. And then you put this one, for example, this is going to be P over A. This is going to be the deformation of L. If you put it into this equation, you have P over A equal to E delta over L. And the deformation can be PL over AE. That is going to be the, the chapter four. Okay. And then for the torsion, you going to use the tau and the gamma and this equation for this chapter. You're going to find the anchor of twist that is going to be TL over GJ. Uh, the formula, these two formula look in the same form, but they are different structural member. Okay. And then <laughs> we have, uh, okay, skip this meta examination. Check it later. And then chapter six, after midterm examination, we will go to the chapter six, seven, eight. For the chapter six, that is for the bending, as I show you. This will be talking about the beam, the beam, and then combine loading. And then stress transformation, and then design of beam and shaft, and then deflection of the beam. That means we are going to have many chapter, <laughs> more chapter than midterm examination. And then it's required the knowledge for the midterm examination to, to study it. So that's it, a lot of things. I'm not quite sure about the date yet, but we will have the final examination after, after chapter 12, okay? And this one, I mentioned about this 10% from the homework, 40% from the midterm examination, and 50% from the final examination. And the getting guide, I already mentioned about it. This is a paper. You do the homework on this paper. And again, you got to understand why. Why do you need to understand the ending static? Why do you need to understand the mechanics of material? Because you are preparing to be a good engineer, okay? To be a good engineer, you got to think and work as the engineer. And by using the engineering strategy and the mechanics of material, we will study simple structure in order you guys to be able to practice, okay? We only working on the simple structure. Most of the structure in the real world is more complicated than what we have in this courses, okay? That's why to be a good engineer, you got to do the practice to think and work. And by doing that, this is very simple one. Simple one for what? We have the beam. We call this is candle beam. We like to put the wood, if you dare have the wood industry, okay, over it. 
how can you do it? This is not be there when you decide it. You got to use your imagination to model the structure. You model the structure, okay? This is not real. You got to analyze and decide it to make it happen. So you start with this one, the model. You put the wall, you put the beam together, and then you put the estimated load on your model. This one can be estimated, okay? Based on what you like to be able to in the real world problem, okay? How long is going to be? Four meter. That is also the requirement that you set it up, okay? And based on this load, you're going to use your knowledge, the theory. The theory is going to be what the free body diagram and the equation of equilibrium, okay? You draw the free body diagram, take the support out, okay? And then you put the unknown forces, that is equal to, to what? This one to prevent the horizontal movement. This one to prevent the vertical movement. This one going to prevent the rotational movement. Okay, so this one going to be in equilibrium. When this one is in equilibrium, that means some measure of x sub x equal to zero, some measure of f sub y equal to zero, and some measure of moment equal to zero. This is going to prevent the movement. Okay, so your structure is in equilibrium under the, the external loading. And then from the previous knowledge of any static, you get the solution. Okay, it's going to be very easy. The 10 kN per meter going to produce 40 kN resultant force. And then if you do this, A sub X going to be equal to zero if you set this one X and this one Y. And the A sub Y, S Y is up. This one down is going to be 40 kN. Okay, and if you take moment about A, Okay, U M sub A, U M sub A gonna rotate in counterclockwise 40 kN view time this distance for this rectangular, this is going to be two meter. So this one could be 40 times two or 80 kN meter having oh <laughs> sorry, having this direction, having this direction. That is from the in static, okay? And then, and then I just said, by using this example, this one is called shear force, okay? And this is going to produce tau equal to VQ over IT. And also this one produce the moment. This one going to produce the normal stress is going to be M Y. <laughs> Sorry, let me put it. M Y M Y sigma equal to M Y over I. This is going to be the normal force. Okay, and then you can use this one and this one to decide this beam. We will talking about this later. Okay, and then. Why practicing this, you will develop the engineering sense. And then also the engineering adjustment. What kind of beam, what kind of beam you're going to use? It's going to be A, it's going to be B, and it's going to be C, okay? And then if you go back to the sigma equal to M, Y over I, Okay, you can see the section that has large eye. 
will produce small sigma. Which one? Which one going to have large yes, moment of inertia? Okay, very simple. Go back to your ruler. Okay, and then if you bend like this, it's going to be very simple. If you do it like this, it's going to be hard. That's mean by putting the beam like this, it's going to have larger eye, but the largest one supposed to be here. So many metallurgical engineers who work in the steel industry, they produce the section like this one to use in the beam as we discussed before, okay? And then there is another thing you may use is to have the foundation for the advances courses, okay? If you are ME or CE or any engineer, you may build the industrial building and then this kind of thing is required for you guys to, to understand it, okay? And then, I did mention about this already, okay? And uh, I focus on number three, the homework must be turned in one week after SI. This is more important. So the calculator, okay? The same one as we use in the ending static. So please prepare for it and, and use it a lot. So you will be good at using it. And the author, no, that's all. Any question for this one? We just know each other. Do you guys have any question? No, it was it was clear. It's very clear. Okay. Yeah. And the author, the student, Liam. Sophie Liam. Oh, Liam. It's clear then. It's clear. Okay. Uh, so let me go on for the first chapter. I'm going to review the ending static, okay, for the first part of this chapter one. And we will discuss further about the stress after finish the reviewing. Okay, if you guys follow me, let me go to the PowerPoint. The first chapter, the first chapter, uh, we are going to talk about the stress, okay? And we will start the learning objective. Pia can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, let's start by the learning objective of this chapter. The first one, we review the concept of equilibrium and the application, okay, and then, and then we will move to the stress. That is two types coming in. One is normal stress, and another one is shear stress. And then we will use the knowledge. The knowledge. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, to analyze and design symbol. This is going to be your, your examination. Okay, that is follow the example. Uh, that means you got to be understand and have some skill using your own knowledge and get the new concept of normal stress and shear stress. And we will apply it in very simple structure. So what the meaning of this picture on the right hand side? This represents you about the basic thing, okay? When you're talking about the structure, this may call the column. Why? Why this called the column? Is the member that subjected to the compressive force, okay? And by doing this, you can use the method of section. You can use the method of section to 
cut it at the middle, okay, at the middle of this column. When you cut it, in actuality, you can dock it like this, okay? And then, and then you use your own knowledge. The force P, for example, P equal to 10 kilonewton is, is the axial force, okay? Compressive force. This is a kind of axial force. And this one will produce the, the internal force. Let's say this is going to be called the F. Okay, what you are doing is what? You reference it by the X and Y axis. What I'm doing over here, not really beautiful, but it's, it's cool enough. It's called what? It's called the free body decker. Okay, so it start by the free body decker. And then the second, by what? By the equation of equilibrium. You do the summation of x sub x equal to zero. There is no force. Okay, so this is automatically correct. If you do the summation of x sub y equal to zero, you have what? You have F upward. And 10 kilonewton is that one. F is going to be 10 kilonewton. And if you use the summation of the moment, you take the moment at this point equal to zero, this equation is automatically correct because the P and the F passing to the axis of the member. Okay, and then this is not real thing okay occur here but this one this one also apply to the second portion but it's not in the form of force but it in the form of stress occur on every material point of this section the same also on on every material point of this section is in the form of what? Of the normal, okay, stress. And by its concept that I mentioned, so sigma equal to, by doing this, let's say F divided by A. And if you cut a small piece of material point and dock it as the cubic, okay, the normal stress, will act on the material in as shown in this picture. Okay, that is the meaning of this picture. You got to be able to explain it clearly. So let me move. There is the process called matrix. And now you did study the edging static. Edging static talking about the rigid body that thing, what? Do not change the shape, okay? There is no deformation in the instatic. Cable didn't get elongation and the column didn't get shortened. But when we move to mechanics of material, we study the deformable body that can change the shape. The deformable body make from what? Make from steel, make from aluminum, made from concrete, or made from plastic, many kind of material. The real world, the material is deformable. Okay, so we are working on this one. And there is another one that's called the fluid. Okay. The ME, the CE student, we talking about this one, the fluid, the water is maybe the water or maybe the oil that's for in the pipe. But we didn't talk about this. And also the ME student must study the dynamics, something that talking about the movement of the structure. Okay. And again, 
we are talking about the deformable body. When we talk about the deformable body, let's consider the rubber. When the rubber subjected to the force like this one, we pull the rubber band passing to its axis. Okay, that's going to produce the stress again. The stress produce the deformation considered in the form of strain. And then since this one is intention, there is nothing about the stability. But when we talk about this one, intention, 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 okay? We don't have the problem, tension well, stability. But if we talk about the compression, see, this one shaking the shape like this, this is the problem about stability or satellite in time. Okay, we will talking about this stability in chapter, uh, actually uh, 12, the last chapter, we talking about this with the long column. Okay, the problem of stability, that's what going to talk in the last chapter. So between this one chapter to 11 chapter, we talking about the stress. And this one is the axial stress, okay? And for the 12 chapter, this is the problem about the stability. Uh, I did uh, work uh, when I studied the PhD on this column. We do the compression and it's deformed like this, okay? This is the problem about stability. When we take the load out, the column just go back the same thing like this. Okay, this one, this one is curved, right? And when you take the load out, it's come back, curve, come back. This is a problem about stability. We will talk about the last chapter. Okay, when you go to the airport, there is very small structural member over here. That's used to tow the airplane, see? This is very simple structural member, but it's important because when you like to park the airplane over here, the airplane uh, can be moved by using this tow bar. That's going to be an uh, important one. And then by analysis, the tow bar, okay, or decided, you got to determine the stress occur in the tow bar. So the step, the step of this first chapter will be like this. I did mention before. First, you got to, to draw the free body diagram and use the equation, equilibrium equation to find the internal force and moment. The same thing. You just take, okay, this one going to be y, this one going to be x. We take uh, this toba over here, this toba subjected to the pulling force over here. And if this is going to be 10 kilonewton, the F over here, just summation of X sub X equal to zero. F is going to be 10 kilonewton. That is the free body that can add the equation of equilibrium. But not enough. They like to determine the internal forces. So they cut it. So by doing this one, the member will separate into this portion is F equal to 10 kilonewton. And this portion is 10 kilonewton. And then it's going to subject it to what so-called the internal forces. So this is going to be internal forces. Most of them is going to be P. So you use the summation of X of X equal to zero. You may use this free body diagram or this free body diagram and then you get P equal to 10 kilo Newton. That's mean you get this one. And you can see the moment over here is zero because the force passing to the axis of the member. Okay, so this all computation 
based on the ending static. Now, as I mentioned before, over here, if you make it a bigger member, okay, and if you dock it in the 3D, it's going to subject it to 10 kilonewton. And again, the force over here is not real. What's real is going to be the stress that's distributed on this section. Okay, so we got to determine the cross sectional area. Okay, it's going to be the area is going to be A equal to pi B square O4, or it's maybe pi R square. And then you can determine the stress over here. So stress now over here, sigma equal to, equal to what? Equal to P over A, okay? We have this equation, but this equation, if you determine the stress, we call this analysis, what the stress occur over here. But in the other way, if you like to decide this one, you may rewrite this equation, A equal to P divided by sigma. In this form of function, the sigma will change to the sigma allow, okay? And then the sigma allow will be the yielding stress. We did mention about this before, divided by factor of safety. This comes from the lab. This comes from the design code, okay? So this one you know, and you also know this P, okay? You can determine it. This one we call the design problem. There is two things. One analyze, another one is design. Analysis is to determine the stress that occur in the structural member. In the design, we use, sorry, determine the cross-sectional area of the member, okay? This is a big concept, the whole concept of engineering. We have do two things, most of the time, analysis or design. And the examination will ask you both analysis and design, okay? And again, analysis and design, this is sigma equal to P over A, this may be tau equal to V over A, this by the stress. And this one again, this one, A equal to sigma, sorry, P over sigma, and A equal to this one, uh, equal to V over tau. Only this, not that hard, okay? Okay, Levi-Rotic and equilibrium of the formable body. Theoretically, the load, that's applied to the structure can be concentrated force. Most of the time, uh, we call it as the point load, okay? And also, we have what? We have the weight of the structure, and we have the distributed load, okay? Let's say we have the wall, the wall, the wall of your room, the load of the wall on the beam is going to be the linear, okay? For example, if you may recall, you have the beam, okay? And then you have the wall, and the wall gonna produce this kind of linear, okay? Distributed load. And you also have the surface load. This is the load on the floor, okay? This is the load on the floor. You, the floor of your room. <laughs> that's subjected to the surface force. And we didn't much interested in this, in this course, but we do interested in the way of the structure in the linear distributed in the point, okay? And then uh, we most of the time focus on what I did before. Let's see, this is the most simple structural frame. Okay, and you know, this beam has the force, right? This beam has what? Has its own weight. 
and the weight of this with this tributes across its length. Okay, its length. This weight is what? This weight transfer, transfer, and you separate it. This is going to produce the reaction and transfer to this beam. Okay, the weight of this cross beam transfer to this one. And again, this one has its own weight. <laughs> That's this to be across its length. This one has its own weight. Okay, this one also has its own weight. This own weight is what? This own weight has the, the reaction and then is transferred to this frame. It's transferred to this frame. And again, this frame, oops, oops, sorry. This frame has its own weight. Okay, that means it also has its own weight. This will across its length. And then it's transferred to, to what? It's transferred to the, to the foundation. When you do the flow transfer, it will transfer from the top to the bottom. But when you build this frame, you start from, from the bottom, okay? Uh, from this foundation, then you build the column, okay? After you set up the column, you just put the cross beam, okay? And then what? And then you put this cross beam, okay, together. And then you put this. So when you're building structure, you build from the cloud to the roof. When you transfer the road, it's from the roof to the cloud. They are different. Okay, uh, this is going to be what we have over here. And there is the connection. Okay, when the support or connection prevent the translation, okay, the reaction will be in the form of force. Example, for this cable, this cable going to have the tension. So the reaction going to be in tension. The loader, the loader has this reaction. Smooth surface has the reaction that's normal to the smooth surface. And for the pin, it will, put, it will resist in the X axis and in the Y axis. So for the pin, there is two components of reactions, F sub X and F sub Y. And then you can determine the resultant force from the, this equation, right? Okay, this is going to be, and then also the internal pin or sometimes we call it hinge. There is two component of the reactions. For the fixed support, fixed support will prevent in the X axis translation, translation in the Y axis and rotation. So when the support prevent the rotation, rotation, the reaction, will be the moment. Okay, this is the main concept anyway. And I should uh, tell you that you are the one who assign the support. Maybe it's the pin, maybe it's a fix, maybe it's a roller. As the engineer, that is your duty. And then when you analyze and decide it, you got to follow your modeling and then during the construction, you got to construct it as you are modeling. This is important, okay, as the engineer. Okay, that is for the fixed support. There are three unknowns, X of X, X of Y, and moving. And then there is the detail for the construction, okay? This is the detail construction for the roller because this slot, we have, you can see the slot here. Yeah? Slot O, that means the beam can move in the horizontal direction, okay? It cannot move in the vertical direction, and it also can rotate. So that means it has only one reaction in 
this direction. So it is the ruler. For this one, okay, you put a lot of bow, okay, to this one, and you didn't build it. You didn't build it at the top. When you do it like this, this one will model as the pin. Okay, this is going to be the roller, and this is the pin. The pin view has the reaction in the x and y direction. Okay, you can start like this. And then, if, if I weld the beam to, to the column like this, it will not pin, <laughs> if you will like this. It's going to change from the pin to the for the this one this one is going to be the fixed support okay fixed support that will prevent this one and this one will use to prevent the rotation so this one going to be fixed support okay there is a lot of roller support you may go to Bangkok the uh elevated highway or even the uh, the train uh, is beam that support the highway support the railway going to build over here okay to be the roller why Ajahn? why they need to make this one to be the roller because of the temperature shape okay when the temperature shape the beam just get elongation so you got to, to allow one size of the girder, the big beam, to be able to move, okay? And to allow it to move, you got to use the roller support, okay? And this one for the pin support. Uh, and this one also the pin support. This is Innovation University. And this one for the fixed support. This is column in front of our library. Okay, that's the real world thing. Next, equilibrium. Equilibrium in this meaning, in this meaning, we mean it's going to be in the static or no movement. Move, movement, movement. Okay, no movement, no, no translation, no rotation. Okay, so, it's going to be balance of force to prevent from translation. That means it's going to have summation of x sub x equal to zero, f sub y equal to zero in three dimension, f sub z or c d equal to zero. And also it's going to prevent from the rotation. So summation m sub x equal to zero summation m sub y equals to zero, summation of m sub c equal to zero. Recall from the instatic, we have what? We have equilibrium in three dimension for particle and for body, okay? And we are going to have this equation. Practically in two dimension, okay? For example, most of the time our structure in three dimension, but Luckily, we can assume it in the 2D, okay? By doing this first thing, you got to, to idealize the structure into the model. In this course, Ajahn will provide you the model. Ajahn will provide you like this. And when you see the model, you may say, this one gonna be the cable, okay? This one going to be the pin. Okay, and then there is going to be the weight of the structure. Most of the time, the weight of the structure will apply at the center of gravity. Okay, so most of the time, Ajahn also will give you, if the structure is very complex, the center of CG of the structure. So you got to next draw the free body deck. Set up the x, y axis and take the structure out and put the no force and put the unknown forces. Okay, and then now you are ready to use the equation of equilibrium to 
do this one most of the time we will take the moment at this point first why why for this free body there can we supposed to take the moment at support a first because it will eliminate it will eliminate a sub x and a sub y from the equation and you can find t the tension t directly most of the time for the structure i said most of the time not all the time we use the equation of equilibrium for the moment and then you can use the summation of x of x and summation x of y later i like you guys to go back and and try to find the solution okay of this problem this is going to be the same okay as i show you over here or not okay and then this one the cable the cable will subject that to to the tension and then you can go a little further to the first chapter of the mechanics of material the stress occur here is going to be t over a okay if you know the area if for this one okay this one not kiloton solid this one supposed to be this one stress will be 114.6 newton and if this one is 100 millimeter square okay you can find this stress to be 140.6 newton divided by 110 minus 6 meters square can you change this one <laughs> very easy okay one thousand okay millimeter is going to be equal to one meter if you square it okay this one going to be square so one square meter is going to be one thousand times one thousand that is ten power six millimeter square that's why this vector comes from and then you're going to get this one to be one one two eleven point four oh six and ten power six newton per meter square and the stress here is going to be eleven point four oh six mega pascal this is very simple okay this is called what this is called the analysis okay this is a problem of analysis the same thing if the steel if the steel if this one made by the steel okay and this steel have yielding stress of 250 mega pascal okay and you use the factor of safety of 2.5 by this one you will get sigma allow equal to 250 divided by 2.5 that is going to be 100 mega pascal okay so for the problem this one is analysis for the problem of design okay you like to determine the area so the a the a that you require that is going to be put up so is going to be t divided by sigma allow see concept is very simple so this one going to be 140.6 newton divided by this 100 110 power 6 okay meter square now you will get this one for what this one for 11.406 and then 10 minus 6 meter square or it's going to be 11.406 millimeter square okay you can work on this problem before for the design and for the analysis from this concept and then the examination will ask you in 
many parts. For example, then they go to ask you for for this point. The same thing, analysis and design. Okay, and then uh, over here, the problem may be the shear stresses due to the shear force occur at this pin. That is going to be the the lock. Okay, of the pin over here. Uh, we will talk about this later. This is too much for you. Then we have three dimension. Okay. Most of the time, the problem in this subject didn't involve much about the three dimension problem, except when we go to the, the combine, combine the stress. Okay. In this chapter, we will talking about the 3D problem. Then we going to determine the reaction force, three of them, reaction moments, three of them, by using six equations. So any static going to be pay important role for, for this chapter, okay, in the 3D problem. I didn't mention about this. I will leave this one problem for you guys to determine the, uh, let you guys to the commune, the reactions, okay? How much is going to be for the reaction force and how much is going to be for the reaction moment? And then internal resultant loading. As you mentioned, this is the reaction, okay? The reaction sometimes can use to determine the stress and can use to decide the cable. But most of the time, again, for the internal resultant, in some cases, is going to require you to determine in different section. As example, the AB column is small. The BC column is large. And then there is the force that applies to this. For example, if this one is 10 kilonewton and this one is 20 kilonewton, you got to what? You got to determine the internal forces and moment by using the method of section. Again, you got to cut it. That's it, method of section to draw the free body diagram. You got to cut it to draw the free body diagram. If this one, okay, P sub A, summation of F sub Y, equal to zero, this is x and y, you will have p sub a equal to 10 kilo newton. That is going to be, to be along this way. How about the summation of x sub x is correctly, automatically correct. Summation of moment is going to be zero because the force passing to the axis, the centroid of the section. And how about this one? This is 10 kilo newton. This is 20, Kilo Newton. Again, summation of f sub y equal to zero upward is positive. So the solution of this one going to be uh, p sub a plus p sub b is going to be 30 kilo Newton. Okay, and then the moment is zero, okay, because all the forces passing through the centroid of the section. Okay, so the summation of moment automatically correct and summation of f sub a also automatically correct okay that is the example for the beam the problem is going to be a little bit harder and for this one you got to determine a sub y and a sub x and this one for b sub y and then you got to cut it after you determine a sub x y you cut it and for the beam you know that the internal forces and moment will be the, the normal force, will be the shear force, will be the bending moment. For the normal force, it's going to produce the normal stress. It's going to be N sub C over A. For the shear force, it's going to be produce the, the shear stress. That is going to be V sub C Q divided by I T, okay? And for this one, it will produce a normal, normal stress, <laughs> normal stress in the form of frictional stress in sense of C times Y divided by I. 
this is going to involve a lot of chapter. This is chapter one. This is chapter six. This is chapter seven. And uh, the stasis occur over here going to be the combined stasis. And then <laughs> come to a uh, example. Let us consider this bit support by the pin at A and the, the pull force member BC. And our beam subjected to 500 Newton per meter distributed load. We are looking for the axial force, shear force, and the bending moment at point D, 0 0.5 meter from A. Okay, anyway, we start by, by finding the reaction. Okay, before we find the reactions, we are going to draw the free body diagram and we use the equation of equilibrium so we can find the reaction. And then that the free body reaction of, of, of beam, okay, of the beam, of the beam. Then we draw the free body diagram of segment, okay. You may see this is A, D, B of the segment of the A, D, only this part, okay. Then you use the equation of equilibrium to, to determine what do you mean N sub D, V sub D, and M sub D. So there is two big steps, okay. Involve your own knowledge and then this is two force member. Since this is two force member, there is the reaction only in the direction of BC. Okay, so first, for static, the BC called two force member. And then we will have this force along its direction. And then A sub X and A sub Y, we have three equations. The first one take what? Take moment at what? At A. Take moment at A. Okay. We from the free body diagram, we will use the summation of the moment at A. Why? Because we will eliminate A sub X and A sub Y from our equation. And then we can determine F sub B directly. So by doing this, take moment about it and counterclockwise is positive. So F sub BC will be separate into one over here. This is going to be F sub BC side 45, okay? In this direction, it's going to be the dash line. And that is two meter from A, D, B. And then time two, and then it's going to rotate in this direction. So this one is positive. And then we has what? Uniformly distributed load. Okay, that is going to be 500 Newton meter times the whole length. This is three meter. Okay, and it's going to act at half of the length, 1.5. So, Taking this, this is going to rotate in the opposite direction. So it's going to be minus, right? 500 times three. And <coughs> see, the distance is here. So this one is going to be one meter. And then how about this one? This one going to point out to A. So this F sub VC cosine 45 degree produce no moment. So put it into your calculator. Then summation of S sub X. Okay, A sub X is going to be this one. F sub B C cosine 45 degree A sub X. And then A sub Y can be up one. A sub Y plus this one F sub B C side 45 degree. And then it's going to equal to, to find the time three. And then you get A sub Y, okay? And then cut it at D. And there are three forces and moment. N sub D, V sub D, and sub D. Then you do the same. Summation of X sub X equal to zero. 
summation of x sub y equal to zero. Okay, but this one get a negative. When it's get a negative, you got to change the direction of this also. So you can also find the moment. Okay, let you guys work on this. You just, I will provide you the video and you should stop the video and take a look at all this. There are some more examples I like you guys to work on this. Okay, the, the free body that can structure, use equation of equilibrium to determine the reaction. And then we are looking for the force, the moment at D. So you got to do the same thing. Now the free body diagram of segment AD and use equation of equilibrium. Okay, let's go and try to, to find this, review your editing static. Why? Because if the solution of the, this kind of problem is wrong, you will compute stresses wrong. Okay, so it's like putting the bottom, you got to do the first one correct in order to make the author correct. There is the problem about in three dimension. I won't be focused here, but I'm going to do it a little bit further until we reach the combined stasis. Okay, that is going to be like a chapter eight. Okay, after midterm examination, we will talk about the three dimension problem. But anyway, if you have this problem, they are looking for what? So stasis over here. Before you can find stasis over here for chapter eight, you should be able to determine the internal forces and bending moment, okay? And the force will be B sub X, B sub Y, and B sub Z. And this is going to be M sub BX, M sub BY, and M sub BZ. That is going to be six of them. It's due to what? It's due to the torsion over here. It's due to the point load over here. And it's also due to the weight, okay? That means you got to include this in your calculation. Actually, it's going to be along this one, okay? This is going to be two kilogram per meter. Then you cut it, okay? You cut it. You will have the, the weight, okay? Only this portion is 0 0.5 meter, okay? This is going to be this portion, and this is going to be 9.81. And then for this portion, it's a little bit longer, 1.25. Okay, you got this one for 24.525 over here. Now, over here, that is going to be force and moment in x direction, force and moment in y direction, force and moment in the c direction. Now, you start by working on each problem. Summation of x of x, okay? X is over here. There is no forces in the X direction. So F sub BX, this one is going to be zero. Okay. And then summation of F sub Y. Okay. In Y direction, Y direction. There is what? There is no force in Y direction. This is in C direction. This is C direction. This is C direction. So summation of this one is zero. Okay. But this one. I'm sorry, and this one. We said going to be include this one, this one, and 50. So this one is going to be 84.3 Newton. Okay. The force reaction is easy to determine. However, how about the moment? Okay. We can take a look. Okay. If we start by the moment about C axis first. Okay. Since there is no force to produce the, the, moment in C axis, okay? Or you may put this symbol, this two symbol, they are going to be the same, okay? One arrow, one circle, or double arrow. See, there is no force that's produced the moment in C direction, so this one is zero, okay? How about the moment in the X direction? For the X direction, X direction, this one moment in X direction, this one time, this one is moment in x direction. This one time, this one is moment in x direction. 
and this one time this one is the moment in x direction and moment in the y direction okay this one time this one is moment in y direction and this one also moment in y direction see moment in y direction two terms 24.525 time this one 50 time time 1.25 okay and the x is there's one two and three terms one two and three and 70 kilometers and four terms okay you got this one it's not hard but you got to beware about it okay and then i should finish uh, the lecture the first one over here in order you guys to go back and review your engineering static and please understand what is mean by 4 4 dash o dash h okay that's why you got to work a lot for each week okay and you cannot complain that there is too much materials to study if you do it properly each week, okay, it's going to help you.